you're manipulating these equations, and then you come up with something which you know is a question in number theory. It's a question of you know, how many prime numbers at a certain level or something like that. What is the relationship between mathematics and reality? And Peter, can I come back to you? Because I another way of stating it is, is mathematics something that we discover or that we invent? In other words, w were prime numbers in the universe before yeah. we thought of them? Yeah, so this is um, <coughs> kind of a standard philosophical question about mathematics, and I, I, th I think most mathematicians take more the, the idea, this, the, the kind of Platonistic idea that this is a discovered, um, this is not invented, it's discovered, and it's partly just the experience you have um, learning some new kind of mathematics or, or finding something. It, it's <laughs> mathematical ideas, at least really good ones, o often are not, they're, they're not really they're, they're, they're not at all obvious. They all, it, it takes, it, they're, they're not natural things for your brain to understand. The, the kind of abstraction and, and ways of thinking that are needed to, to, to get into some deep ideas of mathematics, really understand them, are, are actually very unnatural things. So they're, yeah, the psychological experience is certainly one of, of discovery, that you're discovering something which really had n nothing at all to do with the way your mind normally works or the way human beings you know, behave and perceive the universe, but but it, but it, it it was it's there anyway, and, and and once you see it, you know it it um there's a recognition that oh wow this actually it, it is, is it explains all sorts of things. Hmm. But Marika, does it does that mean that when we think about what the universe is made of, that in this, in, in addition to the sort of the stuff that we whiz around in circles in CERN, that numbers somehow exist that I mean. It's a difficult to, to imagine that they exist somewhere. So, again, I think that actually bears to Peter's point that some of these things are quite abstract and out, yeah. out of sort of, you know, everyday sort of experience, right? So, so we know that, um, you know, certain patterns in sort of numbers seem to play, you know, fundamental roles in, 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 in physics. You know, they determine sort of properties of, 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 of physical particles. And, you know, in, it's this the interwoven nature, right, that, that somehow, you know, you, 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 you went from your observations of how your physical particles, you know, behave, you develop your theories from this, your theories are sort of written in the language of mathematics that you knew, you borrowed sort of 17th, 18th century mathematics, and then suddenly something comes out of this as you're exploring the consequences, which is linking to sort of 20th and 21st century mathematics and very abstract mathematics. So things like elliptic curves and, and, and you know, number theory, which, you know, as a physicist, you would never have actually thought that you were going to go anywhere near there. But somehow you realise, you discover that it actually has, has to be a part of it. Has it surprised you when it's happened to you? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, I mean, really surprised, like you absolutely. thought, that absolutely. can't be your... So, so you, know, huh. you, 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 you know, you're trying to sort of, you know, describe some physical phenomena. You've turned it into some equations. You're manipulating these equations. And then you come up with something which you know is a question in number theory. It's a question of, you know, how many prime numbers of a certain level or something like that. Mm. And, you know, well, how could that have been? And that was relevant to the original question or counting the number of curves on a Riemann surface or something like that, counting the number of curves on a two-dimensional donut surface or something, you know, how could that be relevant to what you were trying to do before? But that's where it's going towards you. So it's, it's really completely entwined. And really fun, by the way, so if you've got kids in the room, please do physics, <laughs> it's, it's fun. <laughs> how do you see this relationship? Yeah, so I think, I think there, is, there is an understandable puzzlement about the idea that there could be abstract objects, so things that an abstract, by abstract we mean, or at least, so for instance the philosopher Frege, who defined this term meant, things that don't exist in space or time and that have no causal powers and those are what numbers are supposed to be, or sets or whatever the mathematical entities we believe in are. You can understand why people have a certain degree of puzzlement about that, because of course those aren't things that we see and they aren't things that we interact with in any sort of causal way, so how can we know about them or why do we, why do we think about them? Uh, but of course the answer to that, I think, is that if you come at it from a thoroughly empirical, empiricist perspective, where you think understanding, uh, you know, knowledge comes through experience, you can see, for parts of the reasons that we've already seen, that we believe in things because they form part of what explains what we observe. And indeed mathematics does form part of what explains what we observe. I mean, just to take one example from outside of, of physics, if you think the fact that a certain number 17, I think, is prime, explains certain facts about the periodicity about, of cicadas, I think. So there's certain, certain animals which behave in certain ways because certain numbers are prime, and that's why, in a way, it's not surprising that they do. So there are strange cases where mathematical truths form an explanatory uh, uh, 
aspect of what we observe, and that's the reason that we have for believing in them. So I don't think the mere fact that mathematical objects are not located and they don't have causal effects on us shows that we can't have any knowledge of them. I think we can if we're thoroughly empiricist about it, so I think we should be. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.